Well, hello again, my friends. This is old Dr. Dog enjoying a good cup of hot kava, fixing to start out on some more correlational analysis. Mmm, that's good. In this uh, little video, we're going to examine uh, the methodology for constructing research questions. And it will entail that we do a couple of other things as we proceed. The, the typical research flow for a quantitative study, uh, of course, you identify a research project, you establish a research purpose, then you frame your research questions. Now, it's important to note that, that this flows in a sequence. What, what is your project? What is the purpose of that project? Now, what questions should we ask? Uh, you don't want to get that in reverse. Once you frame your research questions, you will write research hypotheses and then you will identify research methodologies. Now, I'll briefly cover these. The first of these is the research project. It should entail a study of interest to you. Uh, typically, I state here that a dissertation takes a while to complete. And if you have no real interest in the subject, you will grow weary of it long before you finish. In fact, you will uh, probably uh, go out on the porch and throw up several times. You will whine and cry and be very distraught. You want to choose something that you like. Get something you enjoy, because you better plan to spend some time on the project. It's not going to be done overnight. Now, the research purpose is the target that the research has in mind. Uh, correlational analysis is about looking for relationships or associations. Uh, meaningful relationships or meaningful associations between variables can be a very neat purpose for a study. Uh, words are key to framing your research questions. Uh, these two words, relationship and associations, clearly identify a correlational study. Uh, later on, we're going to look at things like causal comparative research. And when you're comparing, you don't want to use the word relationship or association because these words denote a correlational study. Now, quantitative studies usually have at least two initial questions. The first of these is the descriptive question. The descriptive question is asked to collect the descriptive information about your topic. The second of these is the methodology question. And the methodology question is asked to guide your quantitative analysis. The descriptives are very important to have up front because they help make sense out of the quantitative analyses. Now, descriptive questions should collect the number, the mean, the standard deviation, a host of things, the maximum, minimum, the range of the variables of interest. Now, here's an example of a descriptive question. What are the in-district tuition rates and the ad valorem property tax rates at public two-year degree-granting community colleges in Texas? Obviously, this researcher who wrote this question has an interest in public two-year degree-granting community colleges in Texas and wants to examine the relationship between the in-district tuition and the ad valorem property tax rates. This would be an interesting study. Now, the descriptive questions, you look at that again. What are the in-district tuition rates and the ad valorem property tax rates at public two-year degree-granting community colleges in Texas? Now, this question will identify the descriptives for in-district tuition rates and the ad valorem property tax rates for the public uh, community colleges in Texas. Now, correlational methodology questions should clearly lay out the research to be conducted. Uh, here's an example, and read it carefully. Does a relationship exist between the in-district tuition rates and the ad valorem property tax rates at public two-year degree-granting community colleges in Texas? I hope when you read this, you see the parallel with the descriptive question and then the the methodology question that the descriptive looked at the, the descriptives for in-district tuition rates and, and ad valorem property tax rates, while the correlational question will examine a relationship. Now, that, that's pretty, pretty interesting. You could say, does an association exist? Does a relationship exist? That, that's a cool question. Now, hypotheses, and go back to that just a second. Now we have a, a methodology question. So it's time to write uh, hypotheses. 
I recommend a null and an alternate hypothesis for each methodology question. Now, don't let this methodology question thing uh, mislead you. I'm not talking about writing alternate hypotheses, null and alternate, for the descriptive questions. The descriptive questions don't require hypotheses. But question two, the methodology question does. Uh, I like C, H, O, and H, A. For, and for a correlational study, of course, H, A will simply state the affirmative. H, O will state the, the negative. And I'll develop those for you in a minute. And the hypotheses should match the research question. Now, here's, here's a null hypothesis for the research question we just had. The research question says, does a relationship exist? Well, the, alternate, the null hypothesis says no relationship exists. The alternate says a relationship exists. I hope you can see the beauty of the flow. The questions, descriptive, then methodology, then the, whole, the methodology question has a null and an alternate hypothesis. These are really profound. No relationship exists and a relationship exists. Now notice the word between. Between denotes two things because we're comparing in-district tuition rates and ad valorem property tax rates. If we were comparing three things, we would have to say between or among, all right? So we have a null hypothesis and an alternate hypothesis. Now, the research methodology is driven by the research question. Examine the following. Does a relationship exist between the in-district tuition rates and ad valorem property tax rates at public two-year degree granting community colleges in Texas? Now read the question again. Does a relationship, I ho hope you notice that some things are in red, does a relationship exist between the in-district tuition rates and the ad valorem property tax rates at two-year public degree granting community colleges in Texas? Aha, the key word is relationship. The word relationships lets us know that this is, in all likelihood, a correlational study. Now, I want you to understand there are many ways to analyze things, many, many ways to analyze things. But for our purposes, when we're starting out with this, the word relationship really keys us that it's a correlational study. Now, how did we do? Uh, I've set out to show you that the typical quantitative research flow uh, identifies a research problem, gets a purpose, uh, frames the questions, writes the hypotheses, and identifies the research methodology. I hope that you will find this video very useful, and I tip my cup of hot coffee to you and, and remind you, mm, that's good. It sure helps when you're working to have some hot coffee. Now, I want to thank you again very much for your support. I remind you that your patronage keeps my family fed. Old Dr. Dog says, live long and prosper.